question is sir, how to sow the seed of content? How to sow the seed of contentment? I am not thinking for an answer, eh? I know the answer. I am just waiting for you to sit. I thought he will sit down. First of all, very difficult when someone stands up and asks, sir, how to sow the seed of contentment? The seed of contentment is always sown only through knowledge and understanding. Is the mic work? Oh, sorry. The seed of contentment is always sown through knowledge and understanding. That's why a human being needs education. No other species needs knowledge and education. They know. They are already contented. There is a basic contentment in them. A human being can attain contentment, can achieve contentment only through knowledge and understanding. There is no other method. And the process of gaining knowledge and understanding is always very boring in the beginning. It's always very uninteresting in the, the beginning. That's where uh, how much are you able to control your mind and do that which you ought to do. That determines. You follow? The mind will resist. The nature of the mind is to resist any form of discipline. The nature of the mind is this. Nature of the mind is to resist. What is the nature of the mind? There is a word written, wet paint do not touch. And stand there and watch all the hundred people who are crossing will, will touch. You say the board is written very clear, wet paint do not touch. Why do you touch? Anything forced is never forceful. You can't force it. If it is forced, the mind will the mind will resist. The mind rebels. For the nature of the mind is that your mind, my mind, Buddha's mind, Jesus Christ's mind, all mind is the same. How does one sow the seed of contentment? Through knowledge and understanding. And this knowledge and understanding is difficult in the beginning. Anything difficult in the beginning, you know, there is something valuable in it. This is the tip I am giving you, practical tip. Anything that is interesting in the beginning, appealing to you in the beginning, be careful. There is something dangerous in it. Simple example is, to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, the thought of it itself is, Hmm. What we will do, sir, at 4 o'clock? That's the time we get good. It's not easy. It's not easy. But to laze around and wake up at 10 o'clock, 10.30, what a, what a nice thing to do. <laughs> to eat the right type of food is very painful in the beginning. But to take what they call as junk is very very tasty in the beginning. So anything that is good for you, it's a law. You may agree, you may not agree. It doesn't matter. But the law doesn't change. Anything that is good for you, anything that is beneficial to you is always painful in the beginning. Converse is also true. All that is detrimental to you, dangerous to you, is very interesting in the, the beginning. If good things are good in the beginning and bad things are bad in the beginning, human beings don't need any knowledge. Any teacher, I don't need to teach you, I don't have to be taught by someone else, but human beings need to be taught because of this mask. That's where it is very difficult to sow the seed of content. Follow what I am saying? Practical tip. All that is, anything that is interesting immediately, instantly, know that there is something dangerous. Example, to laze around is very, to be vertical is very joyful, to be horizontal is, what is horizontal means, getting up, vertical means, 
correct huh? or am i saying the opposite just to check huh? food they call it as junk food it's so to eat the right type of food is very difficult last example remember this everyone understands the importance of exercises who doesn't understand the importance of exercises here but how many exercise every day the reason is no time correct i also like to exercise sir but no and if only i had time i will also be more fitter than learn this time equals priorities there is no such thing called time time equals priority if you have something as a priority you will find the time if you are not finding time means it's not your priority why it is so difficult to sow the seed of contentment is because the mind carries away the mind is carried away by that which gives it instant joys instant pleasure last example you are invited to a child's birthday child na not 30 year old child two huh? year old child one year old child you are invited for the child's birthday try this experiment take one bar of chocolate on your right hand a bundle of currency notes on your left hand show it to the child choose what you like dilemma of choice show this to the child and say choose what you like i have tried it many number of times i have tried this experiment i do it the child is looking at the chocolate the child is looking at the bundle of currency notes and the child is looking above my head also because the mother is standing behind me saying means what go to the so it's looking at this looking at this looking above my head and grabs what that's all we should be slightly wiser than the child to sow the seed of country okay decided to fight for country's freedom one man suddenly decided i am going to fight for country's freedom he told his wife and children that this is what i am going to do wife said it's a fantastic choice that you are making to fight for country's freedom but you should have decided this before getting married you don't marry produce five children and then say i am fighting for country's freedom mr gandhi get back to work she said this was told by mrs gandhi mrs gandhi na kasturba gandhi not not our gandhi huh? mrs kasturba gandhi told mr gandhi go back to work it's a fantastic choice you are making to fight for country's freedom but you should have decided when before getting you know that not the time he was married and he had five kids atma gandhi writes in his book my experiments with truth i am not a fan of him but this i like so much he writes sleep plus nights i have to spend convincing myself he writes you got what i am saying he writes sleep plus nights i have to spend convincing myself therefore in any dilemma of choice the confusion is never from the other it's the lack of conviction within one's own self and the other is a triggering factor because what i'm saying therefore 
any choice that you make some will be benefited some will be harmed but nevertheless you have to make a choice there is no choice that you can make where all everyone everyone around you is happy if you are so focused on that you will become what is known as a feather in the summer breeze now you know feather in the summer breeze whichever direction the wind flows the breeze the the feather you seen the tom hanks movie in the first scene the feather you know you seen that movie where he won those awards what is the name of the movie where he is the runner rand and what all he does in that movie ah huh? yes. forest gump feather in the summer breeze the first scene is what is known as the feather in the the, the just keeps you have to make a choice when you make a choice it is an accepted fact it is a given fact that some will be some will be hurt by it you don't intend to hurt them you don't make a choice in order to hurt them you make your choice as a invariable thing they will be will be hurt you, you don't know how much i felt when i gave my example i know how much my father was crying my mother was crying and i know the marks that i have had even today when i look at that i still doubt whether i made the right i'm not i'm just joking for they are unhappy they were unhappy but nevertheless we have to make a choice for they will be hurt some i know when i say they means some will be hurt that's why i give this example from history kasturba gandhi told mahatma gandhi go back to go back to work he came here to south africa not for not for freedom fight he came to south africa to make to make money and let's go back don't waste your time in freedom gandhi writes that's why the title of the book is my experiments with truth he writes in that book wonderful confession he makes he says sleepless nights i have to spend convincing myself for their hurt then being hurt is hurting him now the choice he has to make you follow the conviction okay sir one more yeah please uh, sir what about time? ask sir ask your sir how much time we have he stand we have sir yeah. ask him to sit also why is he standing sir please sit down ha yes sir what about the choice a man uh, makes uh, of uh, ditching his studies and uh, supporting his uh, family financially and joining uh, any job or something and uh, he wants to study but he makes a choice of uh, doing a job yes what about that choice you don't have the dilemma no what happens if a person has to come with he has the two choice he has to support his family or go and take up a study again it is based on the individual how strong he is if he is strong enough he will say as it is anyway we are battling let the battle continue for two more years three more years when i come back with a higher qualification the way that i can make their life happy for a long period of time versus taking up a job and just feeding them bread and but it's the choice he has to carefully think and analyze where you can't think and analyze you have to take some guidance and then make a make a choice i am not saying what he should choose that's not my job i would say if the person is really affectionate what he will do in the family is battling those around are battling two more years three more years but what happens for the rest of the life but the mind which is so impulsive by nature falls for the immediate pain what 
choices are should not be made in the emotional moment any choice made when you are emotional is bound to hurt you that's why they say never make promises when you are in love when you are in love don't make any promise for you will i don't mean you as a person you will are bound to break it because in that in that emotional moment they say oh we both like you and you do the world has seen many lovers but not like you and me one me see the world has seen millions of mothers till now and every mother thinks that she is the is the best i think like that and the world has seen any millions and millions of lovers and all those who fall in love they think they are slightly best than the even laila majnu romeo juliet can't be like because and they make promises to each other and then they come and say they betray love betray love doesn't betray when you are impulsive when you are emotional you should not make a you should not make a choice you should not make a promise also imagine this a fellow is drunk fully drunk in that drunken state he comes to you and says you are my best friend i have met the person in my who wishes my welfare is you no one can beat you in that as a token of friendship all my property i will give it to you when he is saying that the drunken state if you are also equally drunk what will you do you will give the stamp paper and say <laughs> sign if you are not drunk what will you do first to go home safely we will see this tomorrow because tomorrow the fellow will not come back with the same proposal you know that why in the drunken emotions are that i am not saying they are bad any choice any decision should not be made under the influence of emotions postpone it rationalize about it to whatever extent you can or if you can't take guidance and make the choice it will help okay there's some more yeah so these days the youth is very strong mm-hmm. we have that these days where a girl orders a pizza a friend asks why this pizza because i have dumped her <laughs> Good afternoon sir. Uh, my name is Rishi. Uh, so uh, we have talked about relationship with the world and uh, we have uh, you have given many examples uh, that humans understand relationship with other species but do not understand this relationship with the fellow humans. So my question is what act as a barrier in understanding the relationship with the fellow human? Why What's are, the barrier? Yeah, why are we able to understand that individuality and accept it from the heart? Expectations. Expectations. I want the other to behave in the pattern which I want. I will not want the cobra to do that, for I know it is not possible. In the case of a fellow human being, it is what is known as expectations. Expectation means there is a great saint great thinker called ramatirtha in this country he died in 1906 from punjab undivided the india from punjab today it's in pakistan he died in 1906 at the age of 32 you can put all the saints this country has produced on one side and you can put ramatirtha on the other side he stands out slightly better than that and i have no connections with him but for he has no institution no ashrams no nothing all that we have all that we have about this man is a few books of his lectures that's all he died in 1906 and that man says all expectations boils down to oh why is a lily not an oak again i repeat he says all boils down to why is a lily not a oak we are not able to accept it because of our expectations what is the expectations of the human being it's, it's bizarre that human mind is it will want 
the summer to be cold and the winter to be hot every summer hot 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 every winter cold 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 the human mind is that where it will want the summer to be cold and the winter to be hot the nagging person not to nag how is it possible nagging person will nag no it's expectations very good question it is the expectations that makes us not able to accept the other expectation is as absurd because you want the other to turn into a machine in your hands if i smile the other should smile if i have a headache everyone should keep quiet because i have a headache when i am smiling even when the other is having a headache he or she has to ignore the headache and and smile how can there be a relationship expectation well understand this per se everyone is good individually if you take per se everyone is good per se the man is also good per se the lady is also good how is it that when two good people get together relationship alone goes bad because of expectations what what i'm saying per se the lady is also good per se the man is also good but when two good people get together what should happen logically speaking there should be more joy more happiness more of good things no but then sadly you find exactly the all relationship parent versus children employer versus employee teacher versus student every relationship wherever there is a relationship problem there is a hidden expectation that is not being met frustration is because of that instead of looking into oneself and correcting that expectation the mind will blame the other mind says i am suffering because of you if only you didn't do this i will not the other will turn back and say i am suffering because of they keep fighting with each other because all relationship boils down to expectations how to handle that understand cobra will be a cobra tiger will be a a tiger summer will be hot winter will be cold wife na nagging husband na hysterical very simple you know you just have to accept it follow yes one or two more questions yeah. yes you people should not at- listen very attentively yeah you all listen so attentively i have to sit and answer all these questions <laughs> or i don't expect anyone to listen to me attentively ah yes sir Hello sir, my name is Sinwar Raja. My question is sir, how to eliminate stress? Uh, like how to find joy in working? You find the joy in working. How to find joy in working? Yes. yes. You find the joy in working when you are working for a higher cause. When work is done with a selfish, self-centered motive, you are fighting against the whole world. Wherever you see, wherever you go, you see a friction. you see a competition you see a fight just as there is a classroom of 40 children when the mother walks into the classroom the mother will see her child and 39 other competitors the child walks into the classroom the child will see 39 friends you know the joy is because of not when you work for a selfish self centered reason you are bound to be agitated it's a law you can't change it i can't change it and why the law is made like that we don't know but it is the law when you are working for a higher cause 
there is a there is a joy there is there is power in your action there is dynamism in your action there is joy in your action when you work for a higher cause consider this example in the workplace scenario in an office environment even here when you want to go and ask from your higher authorities for a favor for yourself versus you represent a group of 30 and talk for that group there is a difference between the two no you want to go and ask for a favor for your own self versus asking for a higher cause a higher cause means representing a group the way you walk only changes the way you get into the room only you you want to go and ask for a favor for yourself you will walk into the room talk everything else and you will come out for something something jokes here you walk into the same room the same person when you are representing a cause of 20 students or in an organization when you are representing the cause of 20 people the whole energy the entire enthusiasm the entire thing is completely different so how do you find joy of action you work for a higher cause you work for a higher cause above your selfish and self centered interest there is joy for the human being can find the joy only in that opposite of that is what people try that gets they get very bored why because there is the law the law of neutralization you all understand that law the law of neutralization imagine the person has never drunk at all in his life a person who has never tasted alcohol in his life is called a teetotaler he has never drunk alcohol at all first time you drink you have a peg one peg is enough to give up give that kick three weeks later four weeks later you lose that joy in order to get that joy again you have to double it now you have to have now you have to have two pegs in order to get the same joy after a while you'll get neutralized to the two pegs a quarter bottle half a bottle a time comes where you can consume one whole bottle of alcohol and still derive no joy at all that's the state of neutralization what people call as stress boredom is nothing but a state of neutralization how to avoid that i am not against alcohol or please that's your choice you want to drink you don't want to drink that is your that's your choice but i'm saying how the law of neutralization works to a one year old child you dump the child with toys child will leave all the toys and will go into the kitchen and pick up pick up something from the kitchen and it will play neutralization when you are neutralized you will you will get addicted and neutralized the person is the one who seeks an addiction and the only way to overcome that boredom is to get addicted to something some people are addicted to watching movies some people are addicted to going temples i know in my circle in my vedanta circle quite a few are addicted to my classes also addiction is that if in one week no class like an alcoholic their whole body starts taking and shivering oh why sir where are you going one week no class i said what is an addiction or what you follow what i am saying the joy of action comes when you when you know how not to get neutralized and work for a higher cause two principles work for a higher cause avoid neutralization neutralization you understand it's very simple first mango 10 months no mango the first mango comes is very very tasty second mango you eat continuously not one week later first mango is joyful second mango okay third mango continuously third mango pain starts 
fourth mango is a torture. Fifth mango, you scream on top of the voice and say, get out. Neutralize this. When you work for a higher cause, you don't get quickly neutralized. You will have that, you will be able to keep the joy content for a long period of time. You follow? Work for a higher cause, avoid neutralization. That's uh, so how you get? Right. I think uh, that's where we'll finish. Uh, we have a